I uh, started recording my in local now. So, uh, okay. you have given some message, I mean, right. Now you have to give me the control. No, I haven't started up. So, uh, welcome uh, everybody. Okay. This is uh, Balaji. Um, I'm organizing this uh, meetup for uh, past two years. And uh, uh, this one, uh, mostly we are uh, inviting um, quantum uh, Uh, we have uh, Virendra, he's an advisor for our uh, app, and uh, VGG, uh, Dr. Veselin also, um, he's and our uh, So those are, uh, uh, and also Venkatesh, uh, he also, I think, um, joined. Um, uh, they are one of the panels uh, of our meetup, and we have around 700 um, members. Uh, I I will post the link uh, join uh, for further uh, future uh, talks and also I will send the recordings to you if you join our meetup. Um, so I'll hand over the um, to Virendra now. He will uh, take it from here. Oh, Veselin also the um Virendra, I don't see yours. Yeah. You uh Virendra, um I can't see your name here. Why I look at it in the order as D. Oh it comes Doctor to, oh, okay, Doctor. That's must have put it in the order there. Thank you. Thank you, presenter. Uh, please take it. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's see. So basically, uh, welcome everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Globally, this uh, time zone set up here and I know these have been the days we are all stuck inside and we are all looking at how we can reduce our basically so much of screen time. So I will not take very long. I know we are all looking at this new spectrum which John is going to share with us in terms of how a raspberry kind of everyone can be simulated to use for quantum computer. Another very interesting area. And as we were pre-talking before this conference and everybody was trying to check uh, where this all originated and John shared with us that it has been mainly a hobby and he's also even considering to make it a startup sometime, someplace, somewhere, wherever. And right now he's in Germany and he has been traveling very often to San Francisco area interacting with the I, IBM folks here and IBM folks globally. So from that angle, I thought it could be a good segue for just two minutes to share with you all. And how many of you are into that mindset where you are right now with an enterprise or really looking to do a startup? That's where I thought Oracle is offering for you to be part of that ecosystem where you could be part of the Oracle's Market Connect as you do the startup for the path to your enterprise, how can you basically make and use all this as a lever and leverage those uh, interesting avenues basically for customer engagements to have a product team interaction and even to look for your marketing and even focus. And as part of this process and this procedure and this interaction you are able to you know, get to Oracle VCs so that you have a good concept you have a good product in the offering they are there to help you fund you and all those things so from that angle if you are interested absolutely feel free to reach me after this also will 
publish this small one pager for you and we can talk more offline on those details but to keep to the agenda of the meeting and to keep where we want to go today with the journey with La, John Lamal for our Raspberry. I would like to give control over to John and definitely as things happen and we all look for where we can move forward from there, I thought this could be a good connect as well for you guys. So with that over back to you Bala, let's give control for the slides back to John and then we can go from there. Thank you for the introduction, uh, Dr. Virendra. Uh, now I'll make uh, John as the presenter. Just to... yeah, please, John as the presenter back. Yes, John, I give the control to you yes perfect john floor is all yours please take it away yeah thanks a lot Virendra. Uh, thanks a lot balaji for the invite to this meetup um yeah good morning uh, good afternoon good evening wherever you are in the world actually for me it is uh, evening already i'm in germany so it's uh, about uh, 8 pm now over here but i know for most of you it's uh, much earlier in the day Right, so um, you can see uh, the meetup page uh, already. Um, and uh, the title for today's meetup is Raspberry Exploring Quantum Computing in Qiskit with a Raspberry Pi. Um, so, what, what is this about? Um, and uh, you can already see a picture here of the Raspberry. And uh, right, we will uh, see in, in more detail uh, what this is. Uh, in short, it is a functional model of a quantum computer. Yeah, and uh, we will see uh, several demos that are running uh, on that system. Uh, we will see a live install, yeah, how you can install Qiskit uh, on that uh, system. And uh, here included or integrated is a Raspberry Pi mini computer. Uh, we will see uh, how, how that works. Right. Okay, so let's have a look at the agenda. Uh, First, uh, first, I would like to give a short introduction and an overview yeah, of the Rust Qberry, what, what this is about. Uh, this will be the charts that we already see here, um, but that will be very quick. Uh, then we will see a, a live demo of, uh, I think, uh, three different uh, quantum computing demos uh, that are available or that can be run uh, on the Rust Qberry. Then we will do a live install yeah, of uh, Qiskit uh, on a Raspberry Pi. Um, then have a look or a closer look at the 3D model. Yeah, I mean, you have seen the picture already and uh, that model is uh, 3D printed and all the information is available that you need to print that with your own uh, 3D printer. Um, then we will have a look at the GitHub repository. So everything that we speak about is open source yeah, and is available on GitHub, the software and also the, the uh, information for the 3D model. And uh, then we, uh, I think we have uh, plenty of time for questions and answers. Um, if you have questions uh, during the presentation, yeah, then please unmute yourself. Uh, actually, I think I will not see the chat window, uh, but uh, Virendra and, and uh, Balaji, if you see that there are questions in the chat, uh, please let me know and uh, we can address them then right away. Absolutely, we will. Okay, so then uh, let's, get it. let's get started with a quick overview uh, of Raspberry, uh, and then uh, dive into the demo and, and stuff. Okay, so <clears throat> I already mentioned that the Raspberry is a functional model of a quantum computer, and uh, as you can, as you have uh, seen, uh, uh, the uh, uh, housing looks very similar to the IBM Q System One. Yeah, the lower picture here. That is the original IBM quantum computer. Uh, and up here, uh, that is the Raspberry. And you see it looks uh, very similar. Uh, the dimensions are very different. Um, so the uh, uh, original Q system one, um, I mean, I, I uh, measure in, in meters and centimeters. So it's like uh, three times three meters. That is around, I think, uh, seven to 10 feet. Yeah. So that, that are the, the physical dimensions of the Q system one. 
uh, and this little model, um, right? So I mean, I if I hold it up here, then then you have an impression of how how big that is or how small it is, right? It's uh, actually a, a little bit bigger uh, than the Raspberry Pi, you know, because the Raspberry needs to fit in here. Um, okay, so and uh, on uh, the Raspberry, um, there is a, you can install a Qiskit, the IBM Open Source Quantum Computing Software Framework, and that Qiskit includes a quantum computing simulator. Yeah, that 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 runs locally on the Raspberry Pi, so inside of this model. Um, and Qiskit also allows you to access uh, the real IBM quantum computers on the cloud. Yeah. Okay, so basically uh, uh, these are the, the capabilities. Then, ah, sorry, uh, on this chart uh, you already see uh, the URL that would uh, take you to the GitHub page. It's rustqberry.org. Um, and I mean, the name, I think it's uh, pretty obvious uh, because it is based on a Raspberry Pi. But then we had to bring the Q in, yeah, so it is Rust Q Berry uh, and .org for, for the uh, GitHub repository. Okay, brief overview of the main components. Yeah, it is based, as, as mentioned, on Qiskit, yeah, the IBM Open Source Quantum Computing Software Framework, the Raspberry Pi uh, single board or the Raspberry Pi mini computer. Um, you might know uh, that uh, there are different versions of uh, the Raspberry Pi. Uh, typically, we use uh, the Raspberry Pi Model 4, which is around, uh, let's say, between 40 and 90 US dollars. Um, actually, the smallest version, this uh, 2 gigabyte RAM, uh, is uh, sufficient, at least for all the demos that, that I have run so far. Um, we also tried it on uh, smaller versions of the Raspberry. Yeah, it also works on a Raspberry Zero, but then it is not that responsive here, yeah, and also the install will take a much longer than. Okay, and uh, then we have this uh, 3D printed housing. We will have a look at that in much more detail later. Uh, that uh, is uh, made out of uh, roughly 10 uh, individual pieces yeah, to, to assemble that. Okay, these are uh, the main components. Uh, then a quick uh, preview um, of the installation procedure. So if you connect uh, to the Raspberry, yeah, uh, then exactly three commands are needed to install Qiskit uh, and uh, uh, be able to install uh, the demos on that Raspberry. Yeah, and we will do that uh, live later. And the total install, it uh, varies, uh, it uh, takes between, let's say, 10 and, and 20 minutes. Yeah, until uh, Qiskit is installed with all of the Qiskit elements. If, for those of you who, who know Qiskit, yeah, this, uh, all, all Qiskit modules yeah, that uh, can be installed in roughly 20 minutes uh, on a Raspberry Pi version 4. Um, and then we have a, a, a menu, um, a, a command line uh, menu, that is uh, very similar to the Rust-P config. Yeah, for those of you who know the Raspberry Pi, uh, there's a standard uh, configuration tool, it's called Rust-P config. And we have modified that, uh, and you can see it here, it looks very similar to the Rust-P config. We call it then Rust QBerry config, obviously. Uh, and with this menu, you can install, for example, Qiskit uh, and start and uh, also install and start and stop uh, the various demos uh, that we have on that system there. Okay, we will uh, skip the next slide. That is about the hardware uh, setup. We will see that later. And uh, right, so here we see some uh, pictures and also screenshots. Um, so this is uh, uh, the view from, from the back where you can see the four inch uh, touch display with the wallpaper. There are some uh, desktop icons uh, with, uh, which are used to start uh, the individual demos. And uh, then we have here, for example, the uh, uh, circuit composer, yeah, the I IBM uh, quantum composer. Uh, which is a web-based application. Yeah, and of course you can use that in the web browser and on your laptop, but it also runs uh, on the Raspberry, yeah, and, and you can use it there. Uh, then we have a, a, an interactive visualization of the block sphere, yeah, which runs uh, on the uh, touch display. And uh, then there are several demos um, that uh, use not the touch display, but instead a sense head display. Um, you might know that uh, 
uh, to the on the Raspberry Pi, you can attach um, either HD or either uh, these uh, touch displays or such an it is called sense head. It's an eight times eight LED uh, matrix display, and it also includes uh, some additional sensors, uh, which we actually do not use yet for the Raspberry, uh, but we use this uh, like eight times eight display. And so here is a, a model, yeah, very similar, but uh, instead of the touch display, we have integrated this sense head display. And also for the sense head, there are uh, two different demos or quantum computing demos available uh, that can be used. Yeah. And uh, okay, that was a, a quick overview. And uh, here on that uh, last page, uh, again, you see uh, the URL for the GitHub page. Uh, and then there's another URL, which oh, uh, maybe I share both uh, in the chat window. Second. Hmm. Well, for some reason, I cannot. Uh, John, are you speaking? Yes. So I am oh. trying to share something in the chat window. Okay. So no, sorry, that does not work. Oh, maybe I we get to that later. Okay. So I uh, I cannot uh, copy and paste uh, to the chat window, but uh, we will share. Uh, yeah. We will share. We will share the. No, it works. Okay, so uh, that is the URL that gets you to the uh, uh, GitHub uh, project page. And uh, there is a Slack workspace. I will show that one later. Oh, I can do it now. I will also share that. Uh, there's a, uh, that is actually the Kiskit uh, Slack workspace. And uh, there is a channel. Maybe I show that right away. Uh, so there's a, a Qiskit um, Slack workspace where people discuss about uh, Qiskit. And there is uh, one channel which, which is called Qiskit on Raspberry. Uh, and that is the channel where we discuss about the Raspberry. Yeah, and the URL uh, that I just uh, shared uh, that uh, um, gets you uh, to an invite uh, so that you can join the Qiskit um, Slack workspace. Hey, John, can I interrupt right here for one second? Sure. So the simple question I have is, I know these are very important URLs and Raspberry processor obviously is not a very expensive thing when it comes to quantum computer. We are all used to hearing that they are the most expensive computers on the planet. But uh, yeah. this kind of thing, if one has to get started, uh, would any of these URLs be helpful or uh, is there any other way or you'll be sharing something more as part of the discussion going forward if someone gets yeah. into wants to get into this kind of hobby like you have developed such an interesting piece and uh, if someone wants to go that path yes right so uh, thanks a lot at the end of uh, for the question um, we will look uh, at the github page yeah, and on that github page uh, basically all the information is uh, right so i see the first people who join the slack workspace that is great um, so on the github page all the information is available uh, for you uh, to build your own Raspberry, and also a bit of material so you, you will see uh, what uh, components are needed um, and uh, in total so all of the components uh, it is uh, roughly about uh, 200 dollars yeah and wow. uh, i mean you, you are right yeah so uh, clearly uh, that is uh, not uh, uh, that is uh, uh, much less than for a real quantum computer and that's why we say that this is a functional model of a quantum computer. Yeah? It's not a real quantum computer, so you will not be able to achieve quantum advantage yeah, with a Raspberry Pi, that, that's for sure. Yeah, that's yeah. basically the reason concept and uh, how that thing functions. Yeah, right. And uh, I mean, uh, so as, as mentioned, uh, this is really about an introduction to quantum computing. Yeah, for people to uh, start uh, exploring quantum computing, you have to look at the first demos yeah, around superposition, interference, entanglement, and so on. Um, and uh, right, uh, so so I think for, for that uh, purpose, it is very well suited. 
uh, but not uh, for really a high-end research or really a, uh, bringing a research uh, forward yeah, around quantum computing. Yeah, and uh, just a small comment and a chuckle. Uh, our Dr. Vijiji is also with us. He has been our force to basically share with us as we started this group about a couple of years ago, as Balaji mentioned, and he was giving us all the concepts of quantum mechanics, quantum physics, which are sometimes yeah. helpful to get moving in this area. So, Vijiji, this could be a good idea to set up some startup with functional model of uh, Raspberry and uh, open something like more teaching kind of arrangement with the help of these computers. Just a thought. I thought I'll share it with you. Go, go, please carry on for this, John. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you, Varinga. Okay. Uh, yes, this is very interesting concept and idea, and uh, I just joined the channel on the IBM Kiskit uh, for for the developments. Yes, yeah. I know you have been aspiring to come up with some such arrangement. This could be a very good startup. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can talk about that, and we will stay in touch. Absolutely. And hopefully now, uh, when the economy is opening by. July 4th, hopefully, <laughs> yeah. if we reach 17% uh, uh, immunizations. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, uh, right. Uh, so let's uh, have a look at the, uh, uh, at the live demo. So we will have a look at uh, three different examples, uh, three different uh, demos. And uh, so uh, I will connect, uh, so this window that you see here, that is a remote connection, a VNC connection, so that we basically see what is displayed on the TFT display, on the touch display, on the Raspberry, right? Uh, because I, I think that is better uh, to, to view uh, than if I had just uh, hold up uh, the real model. Okay. Right. Um, the first demo uh, we have already seen a screenshot of that. Uh, that is the block sphere demo, yeah, an interactive visualization of the block sphere. Um, so here on the uh, uh, touch screen display, there are several icons. Um, and if you click that, so now I do that with a mouse, but you can also use that uh, with the uh, stylus, yeah, with, with a pen on the, on the real touch display. So let's start this demo. We can go into full screen mode here uh, with that icon. And uh, Okay, so I assume you are all aware of uh, quantum computing and, and the uh, fundamental concepts of quantum computing. Uh, so this is the block sphere. Uh, actually, that is a demo that a colleague of mine has uh, developed. That is uh, by James Weaver, uh, who is also a, a Kiskit advocate. And uh, right, so this shows now we have uh, uh, that uh, qubit in state zero. And uh, now you can apply various uh, standard quantum gates, yeah, like the X gate which now moves us to a state one. And up here is the uh, uh, formal, uh, formal uh, description uh, of that state. You can uh, go back to the zero state, also apply a Hadamard gate, for example, uh, and some other gates, as you can see here on the right-hand side. And uh, then you can also turn it around and uh, uh, watch that or analyze that uh, from, from all angles and from all directions. Right. Um, awesome. Okay, so I mean it, it, it's one of the, the basic concepts, yeah. And for for people who are who get in contact with quantum computing for the first time, yeah, or if you are at a, a, a fair or a demo point and yeah, discussing with people, uh, I think that that is a good trigger, yeah, to to trigger discussions and and have the first conversation about quantum computing. Right. Okay, yeah, so that is the uh, uh, visualization of the block sphere. Uh, with this icon, uh, you can go, uh, you can exit uh, the full screen mode uh, and then uh, uh, right, uh, close the Chromium browser. And we are back uh, to, uh, to, that, uh, 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 to the desktop uh, interface. Okay, uh, that, that was uh, the, the first demo. Uh, the next one, let's have a look at the uh, quantum composer. Um, you might know uh, on the IBM um, quantum computing website, uh, there is this graphical composer yeah, where you can uh, with a drag and drop uh, uh, assemble quantum circuits. So let's uh, start that one. 
it is uh, again web based and will start uh, Chromium in full screen mode. And uh, because the, the, the touch screen display is only four inch, yeah, which is very small. Uh, I mean, the, the, the website is uh, responsive, yeah, but uh, not really uh, made for, for four inch displays. Uh, so we have to clean up uh, this a little bit, yeah, and, and uh, uh, deselect uh, some of the uh, elements. So I remove basically everything except the graphical editor. Uh, and also here we can say collapse the gates when we have a bit more space. And now we have the uh, typical interface uh, with, uh, in this case, uh, three qubits. So you can you can uh, reduce the number of qubits or also add additional qubits. And then with drag and drop, you can create quantum circuits like this one, the Bell state or the GHZ state. Yeah. Um, and then if, after we have uh, created this, um, we can uh, switch maybe uh, also to the Q sphere display, or maybe the, the measurement probabilities. Right. So what we have uh, created was the GHZ state, yeah, which is an equal superposition of zero 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 and one one one. And exactly, I mean, as expected, uh, this is uh, displayed here. Uh, and uh, we can also display the Q sphere, which is a bit different uh, than the block sphere, right? Um, so the Q sphere um, is uh, suitable also to display uh, quantum states with multiple qubits, yeah, not only with, with a single qubit. Okay, and this is the Q, Q sphere representation of the GHD state. Um, now we are using uh, this one uh, without uh, being locked in, yeah. Uh, so you do not need to sign in. You do not need an ID uh, for the IBM quantum computing website to use this demo. Let me go back to the graphical editor. Um, but uh, you can also sign in with your ID. Yeah, and uh, for that, you can either, as I do now, being uh, connected with VNC or with an SSH connection, uh, or you could connect a Bluetooth display to the Rust QBerry yeah, so that you can use a display to, to enter the information. Uh, so then you can sign in uh, to that uh, website and uh, many different uh, uh, forms of IDs uh, are good uh, to log in here. So obviously an IBM ID, but I think also a Twitter ID, uh, um, uh, Google ID, everything, basically everything will work yeah, to, to log in here. Uh, and then uh, this uh, menu here gets enabled and uh, then you can really run these circuits either on a, a quantum computing simulator or also on the real quantum computers on the IBM cloud. Yeah. And uh, if you run it on the real quantum computers, uh, I mean, that is a, there's a certain batch uh, queue. So it will take between a couple of seconds and a couple of minutes before the, re the results are, are returned and, and can be displayed. Okay, so that is uh, the second demo, yeah, this uh, graphical circuit composer. And now there's the, the first, uh, like, a, a, a trick uh, that you need uh, to, ex to exit uh, the full screen mode of Chromium. Um, and uh, that, that is a bit tricky. Um, and actually, uh, if you move to the first uh, uh, pixel row, uh, then, at least most of the time, then this X uh, appears here. Yeah? And that lets you exit the full screen mode. It took me a bit of time to, to figure that out. Yeah? And uh, in particular, if you use, uh, if you do not use the VNC display, so remotely connected, uh, but uh, try to do that uh, really on the touch screen display. Uh, actually, I, I had an issue uh, because it was not possible with the, with the pen uh, to, to uh, kind of a trigger the first pixel row, yeah, somehow the, the, the display is uh, kind of blind, yeah, for, for touch on, on the first pixel row. Um, so th the solution that we found was uh, that we uh, calibrated uh, the touch display in a very special way uh, so that you do not need to uh, actually uh, hit the, the first pixel row, but uh, one of the other pixel rows a, a bit lower, uh, and that best already uh, triggers uh, this. Uh, uh, 
uh, this uh, X icon yeah, so that you can exit the full screen. Mode. Okay, but uh, now uh, that, that works. Um, okay, and uh, we, we can close that. Good. Um, right. Uh, so, so that was uh, the second demo. And uh, now the uh, third demo, I will connect to a different one. So, and uh, so that is uh, actually uh, the one that I hold in my hands here right now. Uh, and uh, so what you can see here in the uh, uh, BNC, so in the remote uh, um, uh, desktop, uh, that is exactly what we have uh, uh, here now on, on, on that display. Um, okay, and uh, what we will see is a demo that uses um, LEDs. So an LED uh, uh, um, uh, uh, RGB, so um, LEDs that can be uh, uh, put into any uh, color that, that you wish. Um, and actually, there are two different uh, options how to integrate uh, the LEDs into the Rust Uberry. Um, one option is uh, to have the LEDs uh, here around the crew of start uh, up there. And uh, actually, this one is uh, like a prototype. Uh, and here we have the LEDs integrated uh, into the cryostat. And so they will shine through uh, this uh, hey John. display. John, whatever you're showing on our screen, it is coming as one inch by one inch, unless we should flip the setting so that we can use there and yeah. see what you are showing. Malaji, is there a way to flip the screen so that instead of slide, we can yeah, see yeah. exactly John as full screen? Right. Uh, so um, I think uh, I will do that uh, two times. Um, we will stay in this mode uh, for a second so that you can see. Oh, no, I can describe it. Uh, that, that's right. Um, so uh, what I will do is uh, to uh, just click on uh, this uh, menu. Uh, the uh, No, sorry, uh, that one up the... Uh, uh, actually, we, we have two different demos uh, that I will show one after the other. Uh, the first one is uh, this icon. It is just uh, a, a nice uh, lighting, yeah, uh, um, and there's no special meaning be behind the colors that we will see. Uh, and then we will use uh, this one, the Rust LED uh, demo, and that is really a, a quantum computing demo. Um, and actually, in that case, uh, there there is a quantum circuit um, generated and, and executed. Uh, that uses uh, uh, a couple of other mass and control not gates. Uh, so it puts uh, the qubits in a superposition and entanglement. Uh, and uh, then we will do a and then a measurement is done. Um, so that we, uh, and uh, we will see red and blue uh, LEDs. And red is uh, like a measurement result zero and, and blue is for measurement result one. Okay, so now I will, uh, exit or stop the screen sharing and uh, then probably you can see the picture or the, the webcam much larger is that better it's screen. definitely better now but I'm, I'm i want that you should be fully on my screen rather than a thumbnail right now you are still appearing as a thumbnail others can tell me if i am having a different setting right so probably you can uh, change the view in the go to meeting yes uh, I think in the in the top row in the menu bar there you can talking. switch between, yeah. between uh, everyone and and who's talking right. Yeah. So just change your setting to view who is talking. You should be able to see John and the model he's showing as a full screen. Please try that. Okay. So and now what I will do is yeah. No, um, yeah. We have uh, or you have seen the uh, uh, the remote um, uh, um, display of of that screen already. And now I will touch here the uh, uh, light uh, icon, and then we should see. One second. We should see right uh, these LEDs which are integrated there, and they display just in different colors. Yeah, and yeah. So in this demo, there is no special meaning. Yeah, to to these colors. Yeah, it's just uh, uh, right. So to have uh, some uh, lights on and, and uh, beautiful colors. Okay, let's stop that one. Uh, and now we will use uh, the other, uh, the Rust LED demo, which is up here. Uh, 
and uh, that really has a uh, that is a quantum computing demo as I described. It will generate uh, circuits with entanglement. With superposition and entanglement, and it uh, creates uh, certain uh, groups of qubits which are entangled then. Yeah. Yeah. And, that's, and then they're, they're solute. Yeah. Okay, so and, and again, basically, uh, each LED that we see uh, represents one qubit that is being simulated, and then the color is red is uh, zero and, and blue is one, or, or the other way around. Awesome. So, yeah, I mean, that means and we have actually 27 LEDs integrated here. So you might know that the high-end processors of the Q system one, the latest generation that has 27 qubits, right? So that's the reason why we have 27 LEDs here. And right, so I mean, you, you could think about other demos here yeah, that also use these LEDs to display the, the status of other like quantum circuits. Okay, so let me go back to screen sharing. Right. Uh, so maybe uh, we uh, well, we can have a quick look at uh, what uh, is being displayed on the screen at the same time that the demo is running. So I will start the, the demo again. Was your LED demo, and uh, right. So we have these uh, 27 uh, qubits, and in, in the first uh, 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 in the first iteration, uh, there's a Hadamard gate applied to each of the qubits, and no control not gate, so no entanglement. Uh, and then there, are, uh, in the next uh, uh, iterations, we have uh, always certain groups of qubits who are entangled like three or nine uh, qubits or all 27 uh, in, in one group. Okay, right. So that, that was uh, the third demo uh, that I wanted to show. And uh, so maybe you already have ideas here about what other demos could be implemented uh, on, on that system. As, as we discussed, uh, we have the quantum computing simulator that runs locally. And uh, I mean, in this case, there's no problem to simulate 27 qubits, um, right, with uh, like a short uh, circuits, obviously. Okay, then uh, maybe I uh, can make uh, some more comments uh, about the uh, uh, demos that actually use the sense head display, yeah, the other display, not, not the touchscreen display. Um, and uh, so these have been uh, implemented also by colleagues of mine, uh, by Hassi Norlin and Kevin Roche. Um, and uh, they are a bit uh, similar to the LED demo that we have just seen. Uh, so in uh, this demo that is called Raspberry Tie, uh, that uh, can use either five or 16 qubits and also applies a Hadamard gate to each of the qubits and then does a measurement and then displays with red and blue and what the result of the measurement is. Um, and uh, the other demo uh, implemented by Hassi Nolan uh, that uh, uh, creates uh, or that has uh, circuits uh, uh, included that create uh, some of the like basic or famous uh, quantum states like a Bell state and a GHZ state then do a measurement and display the result. Yeah, so that is uh, what has been implemented already for that sense head display. Okay. So that was uh, uh, the part with the demos. Any questions, uh, remarks, uh, discussion uh, about the demo? Absolutely fantastic. It, it absolutely gives us the kind of visualization how quantum computing works in terms of qubits and their entanglement and things like that. Thank you for that. Yeah, thanks a lot. So, okay, then, uh, Let's get uh, to the next part, which is a live install. So actually what I will do is uh, I will insert in, a new SD card uh, into the first Raspberry that uh, we were using. 
and uh, so it uh, takes a, a short moment before uh, that is uh, started or, or before that boots. Maybe one comment. Um, so uh, what you need uh, in addition to the uh, Raspberry Pi a mini computer is an SD card, obviously. Yeah, basically that is uh, the hard drive of, of the Raspberry. Um, and uh, you can you need to initialize uh, that SD card and install an operating system on it uh, that is called Raspberry Pi OS. And uh, this tool here is called Raspberry Pi Imager. Yeah, that is all described on the website uh, on the GitHub page that, that we will see later. Uh, and what we use is just the standard version. Yeah, that is the standard uh, desktop version of Raspberry Pi OS, the 32-bit version. So that needs to be uh, written onto that uh, SD card. That's what, what I did already. Then insert the SD card into the Raspberry uh, and then connect uh, to it uh, with uh, SSH. And actually, uh, I need to It's another second. Uh, so we need uh, I need to install the uh, SSH keys there. Right. Okay. So what we do here is uh, just connecting to the Raspberry Pi. So, so for some reason, let's see. Okay, so now we are connected. Uh, so what I did is was what is just to log in to that uh, fresh Raspberry Pi, yeah, with the fresh SD card. And uh, now what we need to do is uh, described on the GitHub page and also here uh, we these uh, three commands. So the first command is uh, to download a, a script uh, or to install a, a program that is called get gist. Um, gist is actually a part of uh, GitHub and you can you can uh, like place uh, small scripts there uh, and, and share them. And that is actually how we um, or where the uh, bootstrap script uh, for the Raspberry is located. Okay, so let's start. So I just wanted to confirm one question was here, uh, John, which was uh, LED lights are necessary or they are primary, primarily ornamental. I thought that was mainly for visual depiction, but you can confirm that as well. Okay, uh, sorry, I, I did not get the question. Could, could you repeat? The question was that the demo which you gave earlier with the LED lights, that was mainly yes. for the visual depiction of the states and all? Yes, yes. Yeah. That's what I respond. Yeah, please carry on. Okay, so first we install this this uh, get list, and uh, then we use uh, this uh, script, the get list, uh, to download the bootstrap script for Raspberry, and uh, that is actually uh, in my uh, gist repository. And it is called rasq.init.sh. Okay. And uh, now this uh, script, I mean, everything is open source. Yeah, you, you can have a look at that. Uh, and uh, that is probably a good idea before you execute that on, on your system. Um, it is uh, uh, this bootstrap script is uh, quite short. And uh, actually, here, uh, I mean, it takes a couple of minutes and, and then you will understand what, what's happening there. And uh, so normally it is enough uh, just to um, execute this Rust init script. And actually in my case, I will use a special like branch of the GitHub rep repository that is the development branch. Yeah, we, we will use that one. Okay. And uh, 
Right. So now we executed uh, this uh, uh, bootstrap script. Basically, it downloads the whole Rustqberry GitHub repository and then starts this uh, uh, configuration menu, the Rustqberry config. Okay. So in there, uh, we go into the, uh, the setup menu first. Uh, do the, there's a very uh, small initial configuration which, which sets the path variables, variable and uh, things like that. And uh, then we can already go to install Qiskit. Yeah, you see the, the menus that I select. Uh, and there you can choose between different versions. Actually, the first one uh, that we managed to install on the Raspberry is the Qiskit version 0 0.19. And the uh, current version is 0 0.25. And right, so we can, we can now uh, select this menu and then uh, uh, a script is executed uh, that installs Qiskit, the latest version with all of the components. And uh, yeah, we will see how long that takes. It uh, should be between uh, 10 and 20 minutes. Okay. So maybe uh, while that uh, executes, we can have a look at the uh, uh, script that actually uh, gets executed. Um, so first of all, we will have a look at the uh, at the script that implements this menu that we have seen. Yeah, the Rustqberry config, this uh, uh, command line menu. And uh, as mentioned, uh, that is uh, implemented basically with the, the same uh, approach as the Rust-P config tool, which is the standard configuration tool on, on the Raspberry. So maybe uh, let's go to the end of that file. I will slow down in a second. It's funny. So exactly. Um, so if you can read uh, these lines here, uh, that is exactly the definition of the menu that we have just seen. Yeah. Uh, so that here was the first menu entry, the initial configuration. And then, and then we selected this one, the install Qiskit. Um, and down here, you can see uh, basically what other uh, function then gets executed. It's the Raspberry install Qiskit. Actually, uh, that is uh, this menu then where we could choose uh, between the different versions. And we have chosen the, the Qiskit version 0 0.25. Uh, and then this uh, function here gets executed. And uh, we can now search in that file. And uh, so this is the code uh, that gets executed. First, we need to install additional operating system packages, uh, two of them, uh, and then execute another shell script, which actually, actually contains the code uh, to install the Qiskit 0 0.25. And we can have a look at that uh, over here. Yeah. And uh, that again is uh, uh, quite uh, simple and, and very much uh, straightforward. Um, actually, when we uh, installed the older version, the 0 0.19, uh, that was way more complicated and we had to do a lot more like uh, tweaks and, and tricks uh, to, to manage to install Qiskit on a Raspberry Pi. But in the meantime, that, that works really very, very well. Um, we just need to install uh, some uh, Python packages, yeah, some, some dependencies with uh, specific versions, uh, and then uh, the standard pip install Qiskit, basically. Yeah, that is the command that, that uh, we need to execute. All the others here, the, the ones in green, are not necessary anymore. Um, and uh, I mean, th this is basically the, the standard approach how you would install Qiskit uh, also on a, on a Linux based system or, or on the Mac. Okay, so let's have a look um, again to the uh, uh, SSH uh, window. And uh, right, so now uh, it, uh, in, it has installed uh, the uh, um, Linux packages already, like we've seen before. And now here it installs, as you can see, the LLVM Lite, uh, which is actually this step here. Yeah. So it will take uh, another couple of minutes. Uh, before Qiskit is installed. Okay, any questions, uh, comments about the uh, Qiskit install? Yeah, and as mentioned, uh, uh, all of this is described in the 
and uh, actually yeah, that is uh, what we will uh, look at next. Okay. No so, questions in the chat. Nothing. Carry on. Okay. Thanks. That's good. So then, uh, let's have a look at the uh, GitHub page. Yeah. Uh, so this is uh, the URL that I shared earlier, the rustqberry.org. Uh, that takes you here to to the GitHub. And uh, yeah, let's let's have a brief uh, look at that. Um, and uh, right. So it, as a description of what rustqberry is, uh, some pictures here. Uh, then also these uh, three commands that I executed yeah, to install Qiskit, uh, that is, uh, of course, uh, listed here. Um, then screenshots of these uh, uh, command line uh, menus. And then uh, here it gets interesting. Now, this is uh, the uh, information about the 3D model. And uh, that is actually located uh, in a second GitHub repository. Uh, we will open that in a second. And uh, right, so here you can see uh, such a construction drawing of the uh, different parts uh, that uh, the, the uh, 3D printing is, is made of. Okay, so let's have a look now at the uh, uh, repository where uh, the uh, uh, STL files, so all the files that are needed for 3D printing, uh, are located. Um, so, right, uh, here in this uh, uh, directory STL, these are the STL files, yeah, uh, and that is needed for a 3D printer. Yeah, that is, uh, maybe you can compare to a, a PDF file, yeah, that is needed for printing a document, and STL is the uh, corresponding format format uh, that is needed to print something on a, a 3D printer. Mm, um, that is a complete right. packet, awesome. Yes, so all of that is uh, available, yeah, and uh, so here we have the names and, and the versions of, of all of these uh, elements. Uh, and uh, we have a video that shows how to assemble uh, these pieces. And I hope I will open that uh, on uh, YouTube. I hope uh, that it works with the screen sharing. It's working. So is that URL included there for the YouTube as well? Yes, um, I will show it uh, again in a second where you find that, that video. And it is like a one minute yeah, that shows how to assemble these pieces. So actually, uh, I did not do uh, the 3D modeling. Uh, that that was uh, one other contributor uh, to the project. Uh, his name is Andre Andre Balishev. And uh, so, the, from my perspective, yeah, he he's a genius. Yeah, this is really a, a great model. Uh, easy to print uh, and easy to assemble. And uh, if once it is assembled, it makes a really a solid uh, impression. Yeah. So no shaking of of parts and and uh, noise there. Right. Okay, so that was the video. Maybe let's uh, watch it one more time. And most parts are just printed with black uh, filament. Uh, just that one part that you see in white, uh, we use white filament for that. Uh, so that the LEDs, yeah, if you place the LEDs above the cryostat, that they will shine through. Um, and the cryostat, yeah, there are different ideas. Um, so normally I print that also with white filament and then use some silver uh, 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 tape yeah, and wrap it around that to, to look nice. Okay, so that is the 3D model. And uh, so I will go back. Um, this is uh, again the rustqberry.org site. And if you scroll down on that site, you will find here the information about the 3D model. Then what I did was to open uh, this URL. Yeah, that gets you to the other uh, GitHub repository with the enclosure. That is now this one. And uh, on, if you scroll down on that site, Actually, this picture uh, 
has a hyperlink uh, to the to the YouTube video. Yeah, that, that's how we got there. Thank you. Right. So, any uh, questions, comments about the three D model? And I mean, you, you um, might have realized uh, that uh, there's there's uh, uh, no uh, wires externally, uh, so there's a battery pack included. Yeah, that is, or it can be uh, placed inside the model. And actually, here in the bottom, yeah, that's where we have the uh, the battery pack. And there's a very small. Um, I, I will show that later when I stop the screen sharing. Uh, there's a, a, a small hole uh, in the uh, on the side uh, where a, 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 a USB connector uh, fits in, so that you can charge the battery pack yeah, without uh, 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 disassembling the, the whole thing here. Just one comment there, John. It's a complete end-to-end -end package. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot. It's purely like uh, plug and play is even uh, more than that. It's like just push buttons and get things done. Yeah, uh, right. Uh, I mean, it uh, takes some time and uh, needs uh, some uh, learning curve. Yeah, if you did not do any 3D printing yet. Um, and uh, right. So I stopped the, the screen sharing so that we can see that. Uh, hopefully, if you go back to that uh, presenter view. Um, yeah. I hope you can see that. So here, there, there's this uh, little hole, uh, and if you uh, have the, uh, the same battery pack as, as we have here, uh, then uh, this directly uh, goes to the uh, the, the plug-in or the uh, the charging connector. Yeah. Um, right. And uh, then, I mean, this uh, model is without a glass, uh, but we also have the option to have a complete uh, 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 acrylic glass there. So uh, this one is with uh, uh, glass around it, and uh, then of course uh, you can use a laser engraver uh, to engrave a logo. In this case, the IBM logo, but you can also use another one like the the Kiskin logo or so uh, uh, in this uh, uh, on, on the acrylic glass. Okay. Uh, and uh, not sure if that can be seen well. Uh, John, they are you... trying to see where is the Raspberry Pi installed in the unit. Yes, uh, the Raspberry Pi is uh, here in that uh, back body. Yeah, I can. Uh, at the end uh, of the session, I, I can uh, 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 disassemble that. I, I will open the model, and then you can see exactly where, where the Raspberry is. Uh, so it, it is here in, in this uh, back, uh, in the main body, uh, and uh, right, it is actually directly attached uh, to the uh, touch display that we, that we have here. Yeah, so right from, from your perspective, behind the touch display, that is where the Raspberry is uh, located. Yeah, so basically between the touch display and the crew start. Yeah, so here, here in the middle, that's where the Raspberry is. Thank you. And so I'm not sure if that can be uh, seen very well, uh, but we have also included an, uh, here a logo that is this IBM logo uh, that is integrated here in, into the model. In the, but we also have a version without uh, that logo. And just a, a quick comment, uh, if there are some uh, uh, IBM colleagues here in, in the call, so my, my day job is at IBM. Uh, if you want to use that uh, for uh, officially uh, for IBM purposes, like in an IBM office or so, uh, please contact me because there are some uh, uh, rules uh, to, to watch out for, uh, but uh, it, it can be done and we can also use that in, in uh, uh, official, official like uh, mode uh, for, for IBM, but, but please connect with me. Okay, so... Right. Maybe uh, now is a good time uh, that, that uh, I can uh, disassemble that. Uh, I will first uh, shut it down. Right. So I did not do that before. I hope that will work. And, uh, okay, so um, you can uh, pull the back plate uh, up a little bit and then. Uh, you can remove it, yeah, and now you can see where the Raspberry 
Yeah, so the, the green one, yeah, that is the Raspberry Pi, and that is directly attached to the touch screen display, right? Uh, and then there are the cables that you see. Uh, one is uh, for the uh, battery pack that is uh, down here. Uh, and the other cables, uh, they, they go to, uh, obviously, to, uh, to the LEDs, yeah, which are integrated into the Pruostat. Uh, and then there's uh, some additional cabling. And actually, we have uh, integrated a fan yeah, as a cooling for the CPU uh, that is also connected and, and powered. Yeah. So, so, John, the next curiosity question is, I know this has been used for some of the demos as you shared with us, this project. But any other projects which you have run on this model so far? But, um, so, I mean, what we do or what, what we use it for um, is uh, for this education. Yeah. And actually, the, right. demo, the, the demos that we have seen, that is what we run there. Yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, the, uh, the processor of the Raspberry Pi is not as powerful as a typical laptop processor. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, if you ask the question, uh, is, is, uh, if you run the Qiskit simulator on a laptop or uh, on the Raspberry, which one is faster? I would say clearly the laptop. Yeah. Obviously, um, yes. There, there, there is no speed advantage or so. Um, and uh, I mean, if, if you ask the people in the Raspberry Pi community, yeah, I mean, there are many, many projects that, that people do, like home automation and, and, and a lot of other uh, things. And if you ask them, okay, this uh, specific project here, yeah, why do you do that on a Raspberry Pi? Yeah, then I think a typical answer is because it can be done. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. <laughs> yeah, uh, people just have, have fun with doing that, and uh, right, and it's a bit uh, similar here. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, all of the demos that that we have seen, with the exception of of the LEDs. Yeah, but but the other demos, yeah, you can run it web based. Yeah, or, or with Qiskit on on your laptop. Um, right, but uh, I mean, this is uh, you, you can learn a lot. Yeah, if you if you build uh, that Rust Cubeberry, yeah, you learn about uh, 3D printing, uh, the Raspberry Pi. Um, then you can have a closer look, really, at the install scripts uh, and so on. Yeah, and, and you will get a better or deeper understanding than uh, for uh, for Qiskit and the different Qiskit modules and so on. Yeah, so that is uh, basically the idea. It's a huge educational value, as I said earlier in the beginning. Also, this absolutely entails to something. If you want to set up to teach quantum computing, basic concepts and things like that, absolutely great product that you can yeah. build on your own. As uh, John said in the beginning, about two hundred dollars expense, and then uh, the bargain in the building if you do it yourself project is you learn other things on the side in terms of. 3D printing and all those things, and that's a huge exposure overall. Thank you, John. Yes. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. I one thought I was uh, trying to add is uh, even uh, a coffee machine. I mean, we can take the coffee machine out of shell and convert that if you don't want to 3D print, and uh, we can hook this uh, Raspberry inside, and maybe it's just a crude one we can do uh, for an instant one, instant coffee like quantum coffee machine. Yes. <laughs> yep. We we'll just have a box basically encapsulated. Right. So, um, if you are interested, uh, we can have a look also now at the uh, GitHub repository, a bit at the structure of the code. Um, Right, and uh, basically that would be the, the last part uh, that I have prepared. Right, so this section here, you yeah, have a brief look at the GitHub repository, uh, and then we can discuss or end a bit earlier. Okay, so go back to the rustqberry.org website. Um, and uh, right, so here uh, you see uh, the, the code, and actually I have it open, right, so we already had it here, uh, and the VS Code uh, editor, and uh, right, so maybe we, we can use an, an example. Um, if we, uh, so I, I will close uh, uh, and we see the structure better. Uh, so basically, th this is the directory structure. Yeah. Uh, so there's a, a bin directory with some executables. Uh, then we have the demos here, 
and uh, then we have uh, two or three actually four directories related to the entries uh, on the on the desktop yeah and the desktop wallpaper actually there are several wallpapers that, that can be chosen or you can choose your own of, of course also um yeah. are you sharing the screen john ah. no i'm looking at the screen but i did not share thank you please share thank you i hope that you Yeah, we are able to see now. Thank you. Sorry, I will go back. So what I did um, here, the rustqberry.org a website with a GitHub repository, and here you you can see uh, basically the code and and the uh, uh, like directory structure. And uh, I have opened uh, a VS Code for Visual Studio Code um, with exactly that uh, uh, repository, and. Uh, now we can have a look um, so what we have here uh, is the basically the icons that we have seen on the desktop yeah they are defined with this with these uh, files yeah that uh, specific format uh, for, for the desktop uh, manager uh, and actually this file the rescue led uh, that define that uh, is the one that we used to start this led demo Okay, and now um, if we look here, so this is uh, actually the line. Yeah, so this gets if we uh, click or if we uh, yeah uh, click on uh, that, that icon, uh, then this uh, file gets executed uh, in the demos bin directory, the rescue LED desktop demos bin, the rescue LED desktop. So this shell script gets executed, and that again points to, to another file to a Python script, uh, which is called rescue LED. .py. That is this file. Okay, so and uh, there you already see uh, the uh, complete implementation of this LED demo. And uh, for example, here in the first, in the first, I'm a bit surprised that it says 12. Ah, okay, no, that is not. Yeah. Okay, um, so it says uh, we have 12 um, qubits defined. And actually, the code that was installed uh, on, on the Rusco query that we have seen, that was not 12, that was 27. Yeah, but in the repository, it says 12. Um, then uh, some uh, Qiskit uh, libraries uh, are imported. Uh, we define the backend, uh, which in this case is the local um, CASM or quantum computing simulator. Uh, and then here, this is the, the definition uh, of, the, of the circuit. Uh, that uh, could be done a bit uh, shorter and uh, so basically here uh, then is the code that creates uh, these uh, blocks uh, this is blocks of um, of entangled qubits yeah and uh, as you can see here uh, for depending on on what block size is chosen here yeah, in these iterations uh, either a Hadamard gate is applied yeah that is this h here <laughs> Um, or a control not gate yeah, to entangle the other qubits uh, with this one uh, basically right okay so that that here what we see here that is really the, the core uh, of, of the of the code and of the quantum circuit that's being defined uh, and then here it gets uh, executed and uh, then printed and then we call another python script that then is the interface uh, to the LEDs, yeah, that actually then uh, uh, controls the LEDs and, and the different colors that are being displayed. Yeah, so, okay, and this one you can also find it is uh, that script here, yeah. Okay, so th that was a short like walkthrough. If you, are, if you are curious about one of the demos, yeah, and want to like uh, track it down, how does it work, which files are involved, you would do it probably in the way that, that I just did, yeah, start from that desktop file, yeah, and then see what scripts are being uh, uh, executed, and then you will find uh, everything that uh, that you need to change that demo, yeah, if, if you want to change it. All right, okay, then uh, maybe let's go back uh, to the, um, uh, to the GitHub repository. And uh, what's uh, always interesting, of course, uh, are the issues. 
and uh, we have uh, created quite a number of issues and these are some are really uh, defects yeah so that uh, should be fixed uh, and others are enhancements yeah where we have uh, ideas uh, what what else could be done uh, doc documentation definitely uh, can be improved yeah so that there is also uh, we have uh, issue uh, entries uh, for for that um right and uh, various ideas i mean you, you can have a look at that and if you are interested and have some spare time to to contribute uh, maybe you can start with those ones that have the label good first issue yeah these are the ones where we think okay uh, that is uh, really uh, doable and does not uh, require too much time and uh, uh, too much experience with, with the whole code uh, in, in the repository. Yeah. Okay. So, yes, I think uh, basically that that's it, uh, what I have prepared and uh, what I wanted to uh, show and, and to discuss. So now it's really up uh, for questions and, and comments uh, from your side. I think uh, this was a perfect end-to-end -end, package description, demonstration, installation, and walkthrough with the code which you used from the cosmos of quantum computing and Zoom again. Zoom down was a very, very localized, smaller version to understand the basics of it, which is very fantastic. Congratulations on that, John. Thank you very much. Yeah, that was you. fantastic. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? I'm looking at the chat window. If people have any, what tools are used? You use for 3D printing, and also a bit intro to each of uh, you, please. I am. I'm yes. Losing on that. Uh, what What is that bit intro of each of you, please? Yes. Um, so for 3D printing, I mean. Uh, what uh, we have shown is uh, that in this repository you will find all of the files that are needed and yeah, these are these stl files uh, that are needed if you want to if you have a 3d printer yeah, and want to print uh, uh, that model uh, yourself um, i mean if you do not have a 3d printer uh, there then there are various uh, like uh, websites and services uh, on, on the internet uh, where you can upload stl files and then they do the printing for you and, and, and ship uh, the model to you. Um, actually, I have no experience uh, with that. Um, so, but that, that is a standard way that, that you could do. Um, actually, and uh, before we started this project, yeah, summer of last year, I also did not have any experience with 3D printing. Yeah. Um, as I mentioned, uh, I did not I did not do the 3D modeling. Yeah, so creating the 3D model and the th the STL files. Yeah, that that was done by Andre. Yeah, and I, I cannot say too much about that. Uh, but uh, what I did then is uh, that I uh, purchased a 3D printer. And uh, right, so when I stop screen sharing, you, you will see it right behind me. Um, I mean, I I, I can share uh, the model and and the the, the maker of that. Uh, but uh, th there are many uh, different uh, types uh, which are good, yeah, so it's not a, a specific recommendation. Uh, so the one that I have is called Ender. Uh, it's called uh, for, from, and the, the uh, brand is Creality, uh, and it's a Model 5. So Creality Ender Model 5. Um, Right, and uh, it, it took me quite some time, yeah, before I was able to produce the first really uh, usable uh, uh, prints and uh, then actually if you I mean it's uh, you can spend a lot of time really to optimize uh, the the look and the surface of, of the print let me stop the screen sharing and uh, so maybe I have some different uh, I'm not sure if, if uh, that can be seen uh, too well uh, on, on the webcam. Uh, so this was uh, uh, not my first print. That already was a better one. So the, the surface is uh, somehow smooth. But you can see here there are some uh, like scratches or, or holes in there. Um, so that, that, that is good, uh, but not perfect, I would say. 
and uh, then we spent some more time and, and did some experiments with the uh, a printer bed. Yeah, that's where the printer uh, uh, lays lays on. Um, and uh, so this one, you can see that. Yeah, so this looks uh, much better. Yeah, it's a, it's a really uh, clean and very smooth uh, surface. Uh, and and uh, that was uh, created. So this is uh, just as it was printed. Yeah, with uh, some experience uh, with the printer. So there's no post processing done here. Yeah. So this is really what can be achieved uh, right out of the printer. Yeah. So and I'm just asking next question, which is in connection to I believe this printing stuff, which Frederick is trying to ask if this stuff is directly available for ordering and ordering it in Germany because he's from Switzerland. Yeah. Right, so I, I will comment on that uh, in a second. Um, actually, what, what I wanted to show is another version. Yeah, that is uh, an even better surface, I would say. And this is achieved with a lot of post-processing. Yeah, uh, so we did, actually, I don't know the, the English word, but, but we, we, uh, uh, we uh, uh, were smoothing the surface and then painting and, and stuff. So with uh, several uh, layers, uh, so, so that took really a, a lot of time. Yeah, but uh, so this is, uh, I mean, I was uh, quite impressed yeah, that, that uh, such a surface uh, could be produced uh, with a 3D printer. Yeah. Right. Um, so, a couple of questions, on, and you have to answer that question about the ordering, which you want to take now or later. Yeah, right. So I, I can uh, make a short comment about the ordering. Um, so really, what what I recommend, yeah, for for uh, everybody here is uh, really to do. Uh, I mean, it's an open source project. All the information is available, uh, and uh, if you do that yourself, uh, that is the most fun, yeah, and and uh, you, you you can learn the most about that, yeah. So that is clearly what 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 I recommend. Um, and uh, but uh, if you do a web search, yeah, you will find a website with with a small like uh, manufacturer. Uh, that, that produces uh, these and where, where, where you can order them. Yeah, and, and they also do shipping worldwide. Um, right. So just do a web search, you will find that. Again, my recommendation is uh, do it yourself. That is the most fun. That is the learning involved, right? Yeah, absolutely. That is the fun part to do the learning. And a couple of questions around the code, John. One is that if you have to program the code from Quizkit inside Python instruction lines. Uh, it's the third, third last. Do you have the program that you do have to program the code from Quizkit inside Python instructions? The Quizkit code. Um, so Quizkit. Um, I would try to show, maybe let's go back to the, uh, um, so um, I mean, Qiskit uh, is the quantum computing framework uh, made by IBM. It is based on Python and typically you execute or you use uh, Qiskit uh, within Jupyter notebooks. Yeah, that is the, the typical uh, interface uh, that you would use. Uh, and instead of the Jupyter notebooks, uh, you can also write Python scripts, yeah, uh, and then you include the Qiskit code, which is uh, uh, based on Python, yeah, within that uh, Python script. Yeah. So I'm assuming that the .jy file which you were using, they were all um, Python code. So, uh, sorry, could you say that again? I said uh, I'm assuming that when you showed the shared the code and you were using .jy files, they were all Jupyter Python codes. That, that was Python code, exactly. Yes. And the question again, connected question was if that can also be done using C inside the RPI4, for example, beginning. Right. Um, so, I mean, if you want to implement uh, demos, yeah, uh, definitely C or, or Java can be used. Yeah, I mean, that is available on the Raspberry. Uh, the question then is, uh, how do you connect uh, between the, the other environments like C or, or Java uh, to, uh, to Qiskit yeah, and to the, to the quantum side? Um, and uh, so 
I, I would uh, think that uh, really for, for the quantum part, uh, probably you will use uh, Python and, and Qiskit. Uh, but if you want to implement like a, like a, a, a GUI, yeah, a, a graphical interface, uh, then you can do that in any language. Yeah? And basically uh, all languages and, and all frameworks are available or can be used on the Raspberry Pi. Okay, thank you. I believe uh, definitely people are looking to have the link for the video you shared. Uh, you can, share and you can, you can send it us later also. We can put it with the recording later also. If it's not something you can search readily. Any other questions? Uh, he has put the video link. So you have it in the chat, guys, the YouTube link. Thank you, John. Okay. Good video. And uh, basically, uh, the, the starting point for, for all of that is the rustqberry.org. Yeah. From there, yeah. uh, if you follow the, the URLs that are included on that page, you, you get uh, to all of the rest. And I think you did post the GitHub link earlier also. Yes, uh, let me do that again. So that is uh, this URL, the rustqberry.org, that will get you to the GitHub page uh, of the open source project. And I'm repeating your GitHub link, which someone is requesting again, and it's here. Yes, so that is the, the GitHub link. Uh, and in that GitHub file, in that GitHub, there's a link included uh, to the other GitHub repository with the 3D uh, uh, files. And that is the one that I shared here now. That is a Rust very enclosure. Yeah. But again, that that is uh, there's a there's a link uh, from the normal GitHub uh, to to that one. Yeah, you will find that. And definitely, Hi, I think I would give you a chance to to could I, introduce could I ask people for that introduction. And you have a question? Yeah, um, could you show the Slack channel slide again? Because I went to the Slack channel and signed up, but it didn't. Well, yes. Uh, I will share that uh, again. One second. So the key right. is like invite, yeah, that should uh, get you to the uh, uh, invite page or sign up page for that uh, key skit Slack workspace. And, right. And Dr. John, people are looking for your full introduction. So I'll give that opportunity to you to introduce yourself again. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm young, uh, based in Germany. I live in Karlsruhe, in the southwest of Germany, one hour south of Frankfurt. And uh, yeah, my, my day job is at IBM. I'm an IBM Distinguished Engineer, and uh, actually the IBM CTO for Lufthansa. I'm the uh, IBM uh, channel. And, uh, what we are if you're not speaking, can you please mute yourself? And John is speaking. Right. And uh, right. but, uh, what, what we have seen here, that is a hobby, yeah, an open source project that we have uh, done last year uh, with some colleagues, some friends. Uh, also, my son was active in that. Uh, right. And that, that might also be a, a good idea yeah, to do that uh, with uh, friends and family together. Yeah. And uh, maybe a bit about the, the quantum side. I mean, you, you have realized uh, that my day job is not related to quantum computing. And uh, in IBM, uh, there, are, there is a team or actually several teams uh, who work or who are enthusiastic about quantum computing. Uh, and there's one team which is called uh, IBM Quantum Ambassadors. Uh, and we do also external presentations about quantum computing. Um, there's another team, it's called Qiskit Advocates, uh, also part of that team. Uh, and we do uh, Qiskit workshops. Yeah. Um, so really uh, uh, hands-on workshops uh, where we go more into the details of Qiskit, uh, which we only touched briefly here in this session now. Um, right, yeah, so that, that's what I do. 
Th thank you, John. And uh, as requested, I'm introducing myself also. So, like John, I have a day job as well, and that is with Oracle Corporation. And I have been uh, going through various roles. I have been now managing companies in the Bay Area, especially on the retail side more. And uh, earlier, I managed companies on the communication, high tech, storage, network, and all those things. And you can see absolutely my detailed, more, more detailed profile on the LinkedIn. The idea was that as uh, my primary re interest was in the AI research, which I did my PhD in, and then I did marketing uh, services and uh, also IoT strategies and artificial intelligence strategy for the digital transformation for companies. So that's when a uh, couple of years ago, I came in touch with the group, which is, uh, uh, as Balaji explained in the beginning of the call, he started this Zen Quantum and we had uh, Professor VGG also with us and we used to all interact together and see that uh, it was a common interest which developed through this group and we started doing this, uh, these different presentations, bringing together globally different presenters like John and other folks who could share their ideas and see quantum as the emerging technologies. And then the COVID thing happened last year. And as we saw, we were contemplating and checking how basically even COVID kind of situation could be solved faster using quantum techniques. As the field is into getting into maturity, but we all agree and we all used to discuss and we still discuss that AI and ML and all these techniques, they took 20 years to realize to this point because of uh, hardware storage and all these capabilities which became cheaper and more robust so that people could go from CPU to GPU to TPUs. But all said and done with about 400 billion put into this uh, field by when the US government and the focus brought into quantum computing and some of the stuff now available and the researchers and the kind of facilities on GitHub and the open source thing, which was not available 20 years ago, everything was in single labs and individual labs versus what is happening today. So it was a perfect opportunity for us to share with the small group or big group interested how this field is basically evolving. And from that standpoint, we come together as and when we have a good presenter available, a good subject available and a new idea available. And that's why I wanted to thank again, John, from that angle. This is something where we can absolutely continue this journey because quantum will not take 20 years. I see quantum on horizon on the earth and planet and this field will take over very quickly in the next five years. I may be wrong, but time will tell, but I think it will not take 20 that much, I'm very sure. And it will be in our lifetimes, we will see this field absolutely emerging into a complete practice where people will be and mankind will be benefited. And of course, as we have seen certain security aspects and other aspects of the game where people are trying to see who will go and basically make all these things happen first. And we always are kind of worried on the other side where hackers could not run faster than the constructive technologies taking shape and giving shape for the right thing for the mankind. But that, that's what we do, that's what we try to aspire. And as part of our interest, hobby, and this thing, we come together on this forum and want to thank all the participants also for this absolute active participation in terms of making all this presentation very successful. And as I said, I'm impressed with this presentation because the kind of big cosmos quantum computing is the kind of expensive stuff it is. The way John has shown today, even with the small Raspberry, Ras Qberry processor, it can be educated. It can, the idea can be disseminated to masses. That's the beauty I liked about this presentation. Thank you again, John. And anybody else, any comments, my colleagues, uh, Balaji, anything you want to add, anyone, anyone else? I want to give forum back. Hi, uh, yeah, this is Balaji. Um, and uh, actually, I've seen the uh, IBM's um, the uh, bigger machine in uh, CES uh, Las Vegas. They displayed that. 
It was like mm-hmm. an elephant in the room, a huge uh, refrigerator hanging a, like a honeycomb. And uh, this, um, John has uh, brought it to our uh, uh, room as a coffee machine, which can be like a size of a coffee machine. So this makes the people can relate easily than the bigger size. Bigger size is mostly kind of a research oriented. Uh, people can understand more. A common person has to understand the quantum. Yeah, it has to bring uh, uh, brought to the size they can relate. So that way, it is really good. I mean, uh, it gives uh, interest and uh, make them uh, get involved in uh, giving, getting uh, new ideas, solutions. Because each industry has its own way of handling quantum. Maybe uh, machine learning can help. Quantum uh, and deep learning is already tied up. So they can generate uh, new models for quantum also from machine learning and uh, quantum also can uh, uh, complement uh, machine uh, deep learning uh, like uh, AI. So there is a mutual um, collaboration can be uh, achieved through different uh, uh, views, maybe biology and quantum physics is already there, maths is there. So all are interrelated in a sense. Uh, anybody who are uh, any field can relate that. Even I, we did uh, quantum music uh, with uh, VGG. He has uh, uh, expert uh, in uh, quantum information system, and he has developed a software uh, uh, to generate uh, quantum music. And uh, we did a trial uh, in our one of the meetup. It was interesting. Even uh, uh, um, Virendra played one of the Hindi songs in that. <laughs> I remember. So, um, so there is a possibility even art can be uh, combined in quantum in a way. The presenting uh, in a small box in a very, uh, very elegant way. Uh, John has uh, did a fantastic job to uh, make it more interesting to view it. it the look itself will look more professional in that the uh, engraving the uh, side and uh, very transparent and how it made uh, the uh, raspberry uh, fixing, I mean, uh, fit into a like a zigzag puzzle. It was uh, very interesting. Uh, and uh, hope I will try myself. I'm uh, also developing one kind of a, a quantum laptop, I can say that is, uh, I call Q-Biscuit. So those days um, sailors used to take uh, uh, bread uh, a huge container. Uh, one cook came up with the idea to compress the bread into uh, cookies. So they, how the cookie formed, I mean, biscuits, they discovered because they compressed the bread into uh, very uh, transportable uh, for the sailors to, uh, 400 years back. So it is like a discovery. It is similar one. This huge uh, quantum machine can be compressed into a smaller one, uh, which can be transported easily for uh, maybe uh, autonomous uh, vehicles and uh, things like that. So there is a use cases, uh, it can uh, come in future. It is still development like John uh, has done uh, uh, pioneering work in this. So uh, I applaud for that. Thanks, John. And uh, thanks for Virendra to um, uh, coordinating and uh, make it more interesting the meetup. Thank you, everyone. If you have no further questions, comments, or anything, we can definitely wrap this up. We are almost on the, we are all, I think, past five minutes, bottom of the hour. Thank you, guys. Have a wonderful weekend. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. Uh, thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you, John, once again. And it was wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, uh, yeah. One more thing, I will uh, post the recording uh, soon on the uh, meetup site. Please join in the meetups. So we are looking for uh, volunteers uh, who can uh, um, coordinate this type of talks uh, in our meetup and uh, they can suggest some topics also. So if you have anybody interested in projects like uh, uh, John is doing, we can uh, get involved as a community and uh, help him uh, make it more better, um, reachable for everybody. So I'm expecting uh, everybody get involved. If you want to introduce it uh, with each other, we can do uh, networking now. If you want to uh, introduce uh, yourself, we can, uh, so that we can uh, build a community uh, within ourselves.
uh, anybody interested in to introduce, uh, you can start. Your, I, I will I unmute. Hey everyone, this is Kumar Sinakali. Uh, wonderful session, Yan. Definitely, I'm very, very uh, first and baby steps to quantum. Uh, Zen for quantum is brilliant, and thank you very much. So, I just valued this Saturday. Uh, I put up in um, uh, Thousand Oaks, California. I'm working for an, a very large pharma company to build a data lake. Are they talking about something on the POC and quantum is going to give a value and things like that? When I started reading about that, I said, like, as uh, Virendis, Dr. Virendis said, it's not going to take a uh, long time of an, uh, to be in a production like uh, either AI or cloud or things like it's going to be very, very fast enough. Absolutely. Thanks and hats off to your wonderful session. I'm looking forward to more collaboration. Absolutely. Yeah. Welcome, Kumar. Thank you. Anyone else? And definitely we look forward to your participation and your active participation in terms of collaboration as well, bringing us new topics and more wonderful dissemination like this in terms of the subjects uh, on which you might be interested or hearing globally, locally, wherever, and bring it to the forum. We welcome everyone. Thank you, Dr. Yes, my name is Oliver Erlbacher. Um, thank you all for this uh, interesting presentation. I'm from Germany, and um, I am working at Commerzbank. And um, for me, it is always interesting to hear the projects of um, the quantum computing and I try to get more and more into this topic with the Kids Kids Summer School also from IBM mm -hmm. and yeah I'm open for for every different projects and to see the new things which is going on in this field so yeah thank you all for for this meeting thank yeah, you so where are you located um, are you in uh, I'm located so working in Frankfurt, but okay. right now because of the virus in Bavaria, uh, in the near of Regensburg. Okay. Yeah. Great. You still have plenty of people if you want to just introduce yourself and how you got interested into this arena into quantum computing. Please feel free to chime in. SK, you are on mute if you're trying to share anything. Yeah, hi. Uh, my name is Samit Kaul, and I am a, a student at Oxford University. Uh, I took some time off to, and I'm kind of um, writing a project in quantum computing security. And um, I mean, I've got some ideas, but the problem here is that most of the mathematics and other stuff has been done, except that um, it's not available yet on a scale that we currently require and therefore lies my dilemma that how do I do something that's already been done but uh, obviously you know um, and therefore I'm kind of involved in a lot of different um, quantum um, groups like these and this is my first time at quantum Zen quite like your presentation today uh, and also I think um, this whole thing about, you know, I mean, to productize it, I think that's that's really wonderful. But then I've got some, you know, other ideas where, you know, quantum itself can be used, um, you know, in the field of, um, you know, not just security, but other areas within the computing itself. Um, one question I wanted to ask you, Jen, is um, with regards to, um, uh, you know, while talking, I almost forgot my question. <laughs> um, with regards to this, um, doing this on a, uh, you know, this uh, Raspberry Pi, um, could we, I mean, w when you're showing these, uh, you know, the LEDs, um, what do you call the interaction taking place, mm -hmm. could this be used to then develop further into a, some kind of a, a quantum channel utilizing the 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 photon coming out from the LED, for example, just or, or let's assume that 
individual LED represents themselves as a photon. Would that be a possibility or something like that? To create a, a some kind of a dummy channel just to demonstrate to people. Yes. Um, yes, I mean, uh, uh, we would have to look uh, closer into what is needed there, but uh, I mean, the, the LEDs are general purpose, yeah, and uh, so they could be used to, to illustrate uh, other aspects, yeah, also quantum channels, uh, I, I guess. Um, and uh, maybe one idea is uh, that you could uh, uh, have uh, two of these uh, work together, yeah, so to have uh, like a, a, a cluster, yeah, or, or to uh, simulate both endpoints of a communication, yeah. Great, thank you. That's all for me. Thank you. And again, I'm happy to help out here if, you know, I'll be attending more of these events. So, you know, like Balaji said, if you want to volunteer, you know, I'm available. So, yeah. Awesome. You, uh, uh, please send your email. I will reach out uh, after the um, uh, meeting. Yeah. Can I have your email in the chat? Yeah. Put it in the chat and Kumar posted a good idea here on the chat. If we should start a small LinkedIn group for this uh, quantum Zen group where people volunteer or whosoever wants to get involved, that would be a very good going. That can aggregate our efforts and uh, overall further pursuits which we are doing. I agree, yeah. Anybody else uh, would like to introduce? And as I said that my day job does allow me to help you if you are really pursuing any good idea, AI, ML, or cloud, or quantum is yet to be adopted uh, at our company, but uh, still there are some prelim efforts. Mm -hmm. But uh, if we could use Raspberry for Whatever purpose, I'm sure, <laughs> educational purpose. So there could be some initiative which may want to use some cloud in some form or the other. And Oracle Cloud definitely allows to help startups and you, I can help you get connected with the right folks in the right product as well as uh, our other teams at the company who can help you set up your stuff. And uh, that detail I've already put in my link for the startup, do reach out to me and I can get you connected. It's absolutely like you'll be benefited in reaching your parallel customers, the teams which can help you adapt to your idea and get to help you to go to market project rather quickly. So, so that piece is part of the, again, it's a more of a hobby at my day job. It's not my main day job, but I, I do help my company identify those which are the real potential uh, groups uh, starting some new endeavor and efforts, and I'm more than happy to help you with that as well. I will repeat my Hi. details. I have. Hi, Dr. Diandra. Can you hear me? Yes, please. Yes. Great, great. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, so I'm Alexandra and uh, I work at UCSD and I would like to thank everyone for, for this opportunity to join the group. Uh, yeah, the biology, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm kind of new into this area and um, I would really be very grateful if we could have some group like uh, uh, Kumar has uh, suggested. Um, so yeah, uh, it's been wonderful to hear you again. Uh, very nice presentation. Uh, I hope you, it's not too late in Germany. But, um, but yeah, uh, thank you so much for a uh, wonderful opportunity. Absolutely, thank you. Any other ideas, thoughts?
So I think Balaji, we should wrap this up and let John take off for the rest of the weekend as well. Yeah, I think uh, it is the right Thank time you. to uh, right time wind to... up. Um, so thanks uh, everybody uh, for uh, attending this Zen for Quantum Meetup. Uh, we'll be uh, sending the link in the meetup, uh, the recordings. So in case you want to rewind and uh, see how to make this uh, practically. Uh, so you can give, send us some comments and uh, some topics which you want to see in future. You can do that. Uh, thanks for, uh, thanks once again. Thank you. Thanks Virendra and VTG and uh, Venkatesh joining and uh, especially the speaker, uh, John. Yeah. Thanks, John. Absolutely, John. Thanks once again and stay tuned, everyone. We'll be on the same channel with another new good topic next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, thanks a lot. Have a nice weekend. Bye.